So I got had one other large, not really large, just time-consuming task. As you can see on the jet rocket, the scores just go across the bottom of the screen, and there's a uh, there's a stepper unit in there that marks the scores, um, and each step lights a light, increments increments the number. Well these lights seem to be having some trouble and I wasn't after I cleaned up all the other stuff still seem to be having issues so I pulled the light bar there's a bolt right here and there's a bolt on the other end down here undo that pulled it out and this is what I found look at the corrosion on this there are 19 light bulbs 21 if you count the two for down here they're always on for scoring but there's 19, nine or 10 of these were like this. I managed to salvage one or two, but every other one, all the others I had to, so I had like nine or 10 I had to actually replace. So I got new sockets, put them in there, and now they're all working just like they should be. Um, so, we don't need that anymore. All right, so back here is the uh, fluorescent for the uh, to light up the marquee. Now the marquees, generally the marquees on on video games, you would there's like a grade up here that you would undo and pick up. This one's not done that way. This was old style EM pinball style. If you look up underneath, right here, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, see that right there. There's a little slider right there. So what you what it does is there's there's a piece back there, a lever back in the back that you pull and those slide forward. So what you do is you take you got to open the back, move that lever, and then when you're putting it back, it's got what we call a lift channel right here where my finger is. I'm trying to do this with one hand. I'm going to drop it. There we go. We just lift it high enough, sits down inside, and drops inside of a groove. There, just like that. Now, once it's inside the groove, opening this. Okay, I had to turn the light on. Opening this, you can see right up here onto the top this is that piece that I'm talking about and when you slide this over this away it moves those little pieces in this one seems to be all right I may have to look at that other one down there but you should be able to pop that and these slide in and hold the black glass, but that one over there seems like it's jamming on me, so I'm going to have to get that. This could also happen when you're trying to take it apart, but thank goodness you can always go in here, unscrew this, pull it out, then you can get to the front. So, anyway, um, at this point, I'm pretty much done. She's cleaned up inside. She's cleaned up on the outside. The um, I cleaned up the front grill, which made it look a lot nicer. The um, I tried to clean the best I can up there. I still got to clean this side. You can see how dirty she is back there. I don't know if you can see. It. Anyway, she's dirty on that side, but but I'll get to it. But right down here, bottom, there's a hole. Push that, and now we have the game. So, she's working. She's 99% done. I still have a little trouble with the left target. And the uh, this one little light here doesn't want to light up. But I think that's a socket issue. Well, let's talk about sound now. Um, I've got the sound card pulled out a little bit already. You can see where it's disconnected. But I just really wanted to show where they went um so i've rebuilt or rebuilt i recapped the sound cards themselves this is the uh 
the actual, uh, I guess you'd call it a mixer board. It's got the various different pots to control the different sounds and there's a little paper right there that tells you how to do that. Um, so, but the, so I recapped it because it was really, didn't sound good and a lot of buzz, a lot of hum in it. So all the caps had dried out. I mean, folks, things to remember here is this game was made in 1970. That means as of this year, this game is 52 years old, 52. So the electronics on this thing, well, they're tired, especially the capacitors. Capacitors are really tired. So we're gonna go in and replace them. Well, I replace these two on the board and they just slide and stick in there. So I'm gonna pull these out. There's this board here is the amplifier board. Again, a lot more caps on it. I cleaned it up, got it, you know, all the caps replaced on it. And uh, still getting some buzz. And generally this hum comes from the, um, the inability for the capacitors on the actual power supply portion uh, being dried out and old. And that's these two bad boys here. And there's also another one inside I'm going to show you. Now, generally, these are much bigger, but this isn't a super amount of power coming through this thing. But this one here is a 1,050-volt capacitor of 1970. I'm replacing it with that. <laughs> so you can see, obviously, there is a huge difference in size and performance of these caps. So this should definitely help us out some. So in order to do this, what I had to do was one, pull the cards out. Secondly, disconnect the speaker. Now the speaker wire plugs in here and there's this fancy, this nice little hook right here that holds the speaker wire off of the devices so you can move the front panel comes off, stick it over there and your speaker wire is pretty long. You can even pull this off and really get it a long ways off without unplugging the speaker. But once you get it plugged in, you have to have this thing from getting tangled up in the mechanisms down here. So this wire here keeps it from doing that. Um, so anyway, once I pull the speaker wire off, set it over there. The other thing we had to do is up underneath there was a there was a connection or a wire tie down and I had to disconnect that wire tie down now unfortunately on this this um, sound box it doesn't really come easy off the wiring harness so I'm gonna have to do everything inside the box so once I got it disconnected I was I'm able to flip this thing over maybe I did a while ago there we go or maybe it's better there we go like this so there we go there now now we can see the bottom of the two caps i need to replace here and here as well as there's actually another one down here um and i'm replacing it with this one <laughs> 470 25 so these are the same cap so I'm going to replace that cap replace those two caps spray a little bit of, of deoxid inside my um, volume control pot which will help the noise down a little bit and keep it from being staticky make it work better so we're going to rebuild this and then put it all back together again but that certainly needs to be done because like I said these things are 50 years old. We got to get them out. Got to get them changed. All right. It's not beautiful, but this is a functionality contest, not a beauty pageant. Um, replace this cap. The big tall caps up there are now underneath. Yeah, we're going to have these holes, but that's all right. So now what we're going to do, we've got this board secured back in place with its four screws and it's all set and there's this little spot right here is for the screw that ties this wire bundle back so we'll lay it over turn it on its side screw that bundle back and then we'll be done i did put some deoxit inside here i can tell it's smoother now 
um, the volume control, it's, of course, it's going to be smoother with the deoxid in there. We'll see how she works. Should cut out a bunch of the static whenever you adjust it. Um, so, anyway, that should make it nice and pretty. All right, well, I got the sound cards rebuilt, or the power supply for the sound rebuilt, and all the ambient static and noise and hum is now gone. I mean, the machine's on, and before you just covered this constant hum, now it's not. The, um, the sound for the rocket actually playing actually sounds better, and um, yeah, working better. So, much needed upgrade, uh, certainly made it happier. The only problem left now to solve is the um, far left target. As soon as I get schematics and some way to look at that, we should be able to figure that out. So, almost done. Sega Jet Rocket. 1970 Electromechanical. A game that made history. Uh, made by Sega in 1970. This is the very first open world game meaning that you can the player decides where they want to go and not set to a specific track it is the very first first person shooter game and a flight simulator first flight simulator arcade game sega came out this with 1970 they were in hawaii from this from what i've read and understood they came out with this in august of 1970 Brought it to the U.S. to an industry show in Chicago where Bally and a couple of others got a look at it. By the time they got back to Hawaii and started production, uh, Bally had cloned it. And so the other ones. Bally called theirs Target Alpha, which was like an almost immediate clone. There's a few differences, but it's an almost immediate clone. So before we play, let's play a game, and then we'll go back and look at how the game actually works. Um, so the controls are really, really simple. It's a yoke with a button. The button's here. You turn the load, your plane moves. There's a timer that will go around and tell you when you're done. If you score, as this says, over 90, we above 90, then you get a replay. Again, we'll watch the score up there. If you get a replay, this little replay light comes on, then you can hit the button and go. Now, what I have discovered is you only get one replay. If you play the game and you win a replay, you can play that replay, but you cannot win another game with that replay. You have to put another credit in. In other words, you just can't winning, keep winning replay after replay after replay. Um, but, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to uh, have to turn the light off on the camera. So I'm going to pause it and turn to stop it and then turn the light off. And then we'll see some more. We'll see the actual gameplay. All right, here we go. Uh, you can see the little red dot in the middle. That is my aiming targets. Uh, my phone isn't the best for these kind of videos, but uh, I've got it propped in front of the glass. Um, I have to hit the coin switch to make it start a game. And when it does, here it goes. Now what we're looking for is targets you see there's little round ones right there I just missed I'm looking for my next one here it comes when it gets in line I have to shoot it and I have to shoot it early enough for the rockets to get there oh almost was too far over you can shoot things if you want but you don't get points unless you hit the targets. Ah, missed it. And you can spread your targets over an area. Missed it.
This is what they meant by open world. You get to decide where you go and what you shoot at. Mm -hmm. Fun game to play. I may run out of time before I hit this one. Uh, mission complete. When you run out of time, that's what it does. Mission complete, and we're done. So I'm sure you heard the sounds of the rockets and things. So, there it is, Jet Rocket gameplay. Now, what really makes Jet Rocket fun is how it works. So we're going to open up the door, and look at that. This is a big, huge piece of material that's painted, that circles around that, goes all the way down to the bottom, circles back around, goes over that one, back down to the bottom, goes around and comes up. And this is what you're shooting. And these are actually like little 3D... Um, this is foam, got a foam material inside, so it's kind of a uh, molded foam uh, material in there, foam material in there. That's it's actually held up pretty well. The so when you're looking through the window over here, you're actually looking through. There's a piece of plexi right here that's clear, and you're looking into this mirror, which then reflects down. And when you turn, I'm going to move the thing. When you turn, it actually moves the mirror. See the way the mirror is moving? So you're actually moving through the mirror move. There's, uh, I'll explain. You'll see other, in my repair video, you see more in detail how that works. But that's the way she flies. Really cool. Watch the uh, repair video, and you can see exactly how Sega's Jet Rocket works.